the city council said there would be one location and with the approval of the mayor. And we see only evidence of Congo Square after that. I don't see where the mayor said, okay, right here, it's fine in it. But we know from the evidence that this was the only location. And, and the, the good thing about it is that people came to one location. Uh, that's not good. But what is good is that we have all of the accounts <laughs> of that one location. You know, we have the eyewitness accounts. We have people who said what they saw. And this, of course, was not the only place that they sang their songs. This was not the only place that they played musical instruments. Do you understand what I'm saying? But because we know that it happened there, we can document, we can say it, we have the documentation, then we can fall back on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, another point I want to make was in 1817, that is 99 years of the city. So we're wondering, I wonder, <laughs> were they trying to get ready for the, tri for the centennial celebration? And saying, okay, we're gonna clean up this city, we can have people everywhere, because we're gonna have guests coming in. I know that's what was happening. During the tricentennial, when I was here, who was here during 2018? Like, you know, they were getting things here, making streets, getting streets together and everything. So it made me wonder. I have not been able to find that, but I think it uh, has something to do with it. So let's look at this. He told me how to do this. He said, go down here. Oh, thank you. I see that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, that's not what I'm going, I'm going for this. There you go. So I need to put this back. How do I put this on? Is that close? Close. I closed it. Mm -hmm. What do you want to know? Scroll over again because mm -hmm. the bar came up with the uh, scroll over. The picture. This one? Yeah. Okay. So I need to make it larger so you can see it well. You, you have mm -hmm. to rely on young people like Bob. Okay. Into full screen. Into full screen. <laughs> young people like Bob. Yeah. Okay, so look at this. This is from Haiti. 18, I mean, 1939, WPA. Look at his foot. Move him up. Oh. Huh? See his heel? Get his heel against the head. Oh, yeah. You see this man at the back? We have a WPA narrative from Louisiana. It's, it's in my, the blue book where the man talks about this drumming style. Now you can even see the dance coming in, solo dance, partners, uh, groups. Okay, I know we want to go on, but let's just, uh, and what do I do? Do I do escape? <laughs> okay, and then I go back to my, uh, to this. All right, so. Witnesses, Christian Schultz, we, we talked about him telling us that the drums were, there were groups of drums, different sizes, but he also talked about the dancers, and this is so uh, important to me, is because he said the principal dancers, or leaders, remember in those circles, were dressed in wild and savage fashions, always ornamented with a number of tails, T-A-I-S, of animals, small and wild beasts, and those who appeared the most horrible always had the largest circle of company. They had the most people around them. So I was like, what's going on here? Because, you know, I said that I don't like the interpretation. This is this is very mild. This is a very mild interpretation. Wild and savage fashions. And so then the ritual specialists from uh, the Democratic of Republic uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo dress in those kinds of fashions. You see, these are animal tales. You may not be able to see this, but the belief is that those tales hold powers healing powers, special powers, medicine. And when they dance and turn around, their the tails fly out and spread these powers, these healing powers, mm -hmm. on the people who are in the circles. Mm -hmm. I would be in one of those circles. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I would be among those 
wanting this relief, this protection, this this uh, this healing from them. And here's another example of uh, the ritual specialist. Here, the you can see the tails are a little clearer here. The wild animals, some with long tails, and this is a log drum. So here's a musician back here dancing for him. So when you put it together like that. You see that the carryover of religious beliefs in this in this um, in Congo Square. You see then the um, the importance of culture being passed on. I'd like to say that uh, when enslaved Africans were taken from their homeland, they were separated from their loved ones, separated from their countries. They were stripped of everything they knew and had, even their clothing, because believe me, they did not have clothing after they were shipped for. Uh, six weeks or so, right? But there was something that the slave trade could not take away. 